People sometimes make mistakes. Not me or you, of course, but like other people. So when a game releases, sometimes files are left in that the players were never meant to see. This happened for the very first release of GTA 5 on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 as a file was left in known as missions.xml. It contains Rockstar's plans for the game in the early stages of its development, which reveals to us both content that was cut from the game entirely and also how the content we eventually received looked before it was changed for release. I will not only tell you of the most interesting information found within, but I've also gone to some effort to recreate some of the cut content, showing you things that you definitely have never seen before. I will do my best to go chronologically through the game, so I'll start with Friend Request that was initially split into two missions. The first called Friend Request was to have us use Michael to pose as a programmer to enter the Life Invader offices and plan to bomb on the target's mobile phone. A second mission called Selling Short would see us then call the phone to kill the targets. All these things, of course, we ended up doing in the release version, but both missions were combined together. It was originally planned on long stretch for SWAT teams and the ballers to be your opposition. Lamar and Stretch were to drag Franklin along to a deal going down at the recycling plant. The deal turns out to be a setup and SWAT teams raid the plant. We were then to shoot out and escape the gang and SWAT. In the release version, SWAT never actually raids the recycling plant and are simply outside and we need to escape them when we're fleeing. This change must have come fairly late in development because D's lines somewhat reference this old idea. Oh. Hey, look, 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 this ain't about you, man. What? You know these niggas dumb. Yo, what the fuck up. this trick talking about, man? Yeah, What's yeah, that? yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, see, see? On they put a nigga on TV, man, about some gang intervention shit. He is speaking of how the police plan to use him in their gang intervention programs to convince youth to leave the gang life or never join it at all. D was originally meant to be a police informant, likely setting up both the Bullers and Grove Street families in this deal, which is why originally we would have needed to fight both the Bullers and the police on our way out. Having both groups inside these cramped buildings, somehow peaceful with each other and yet fighting us, doesn't make a lot of sense, so I suspect that was why it was changed. Cut voice lines found in the game's files reference the earlier version of this mission, though. The pigs want you bad, homie. Snitch must have rolled hard. Who know what that motherfucker peeing to us? Go, go, go! Prepare to breach. The informant's down! The asset's gone! Get these guys! The Fraser Merriweather heist was originally referred to as the Port of Los Santos heist to a finale, and all the roles of the characters were different. Franklin was to place the bombs rather than Michael, Trevor was to cover with a sniper rifle rather than Franklin, and they were all to swim to the wreck and retrieve the goods, not just Michael. I think this shows that the mini-sub was a late addition, and likely was added to resolve the fairly unbelievable idea that the three of them could just carry the loot while swimming. While in the release version, we steal an ambiguous super weapon to sell to the Chinese, originally we were stealing warheads to sell to someone called A. It's well known that the Mission Blitz play was based on a heist from the 1995 movie Heat, so it's probably not a surprise that the mission was originally called Heat. While in the release version, Steve Haynes directs us to steal bearer bonds for Devon Weston, originally we were meant to be stealing combat armor. Perhaps this is the combat armor that we later used in the Polito score. The only other difference is that in the official version, we escape in a garbage truck, while originally we were to escape in an ambulance, which would have matched what they used in the movie version of the heist. The mission I fought the law was originally more brutal. Normally, when we catch up to the drivers of the target vehicles, we simply let them run away. But originally, we were to push them off the bridge. Perhaps this idea and animation were repurposed for Trevor's switch scene where he throws a lost member off a bridge. The mission Eye in the Sky sees us using a helicopter that was acquired for us by Devin Weston. Devin Weston sent me. Oh, oh, right. Uh, the helipad is on the roof. Originally, though, it was meant to be Trevor calling in a favor from a buddy to get access. The roles of the characters were also reversed, with Franklin spotting the car and Trevor going to steal it. Card Libre was originally called Vinewood Babylon, and rather than involving Michael and Trevor, it was to involve Michael and Franklin, with Franklin chasing down the plane on a bike rather than Trevor. Honestly, Franklin originally being involved makes sense, as he was there when Martin met Michael, with Martin referring to him as a smart kid. Even in the release version, they acknowledge this, as Michael sends Franklin a text, saying that Martin wanted Franklin involved, but Michael did Franklin a solid, and got Trevor involved instead. The Polito score is the only heist in the game that doesn't have two options, but the early concepts of the Polito score 2A and 2B suggest they originally intended for there to be multiple approaches. 2A just describes us surviving with the armor and escaping through the heavy shootouts, while in 2B, Franklin was to rescue us with a tank. I suspect that both were combined in the official release as the final version of the heist has many issues. 
Franklin, for example, is told to wait with a boat for the getaway. What about me? You'll be waiting for them by the river, handling the getaway. All right. If you follow him when you drop him off, you can actually find him down there waiting. It also doesn't make sense for them to have a boat in the first place because... Our little posse are flat fucking broke. And so they were doing the heist to get money to buy equipment for the raid that is done on the mission monkey business. One of those items they wanted to get was a boat. Uh, listen, you'll need some fairly standard gear. Boat, tandem rotor heavy lift helicopter, truck, weapons. You'll have to source all of that. When Franklin eventually arrives and rescues them with the bulldozer, the other crew member who helped with the heist stays behind and is left to find a way to get free himself, which makes no sense, but it would make sense if there was a heist option where everyone was meant to leave that way. I think originally the small cutscene of the cargo bob bringing in a tank was meant to be bringing in Franklin to save the day. But perhaps you see the problem. If we already had the cargo bob and the boat for monkey business prior to the Polito score heist, there would be no reason to do the heist at all because that's why we needed the money. For the rest of Dave's list, we still a military truck to get weapons, but the truck we never actually source. It just appears in the mission monkey business and we drop the toxin onto it at the end. As you can see, there are many logical problems that have arisen because of these changes to the heist and we can only speculate why they happened. Moving on to something simpler, Derail didn't change all that much, except we were to flee using a jet ski rather than the boat that we ended up using. Monkey business, however, saw substantial changes, as in the release version we only received the first part of the mission. In the version we received, Franklin does so little that it's actually commented on that he's doing nothing. I think Franklin's the one taking the easy way. Guy's got his feet up in an aircraft hangar. Trevor, on the other hand, has the role of flying down the end in the cargo bob and rescuing Dave and Michael. Originally, however, Franklin was to rescue Dave and Michael, followed by a helicopter chase through the city where we would defend off pursuers. We would do this by shooting while perched on top of the container with the toxin in it. Moving the camera during the previous cutscene shows Dave and Michael being placed on the container, and while it is unbelievable that they could hold on, it makes more sense than their being in the helicopter as they ended up being, as they would have no way to get in from the ground while the helicopter was holding onto the container. We were to eventually transfer the container to where it needed to go, after which we'd parachute to safety. Instead of this, in the release version, Dave just handles the disposal of the virus off screen. It is possible that some of this cut content was repurposed for the Humane Labs raid that ended up being in GT Online. As much of what we do in that heist sounds similar to what is being described here. The mission Hang 10 was originally called Paradise Lost and states explicitly that Trevor kills Floyd and Deborah. In the release version, it just cuts to black and doesn't show what happens, so whether this is still meant to be true, we can't know. Cleaning out the bureau was simply named Follow Janitor, and Michael was originally intended to kill the janitor and take his clothing. This is honestly not in character for Michael, so I'm glad they changed it. The version of architect plans that we received in the release version is very strange, as all you do is follow an architect with Franklin, take his briefcase, and then leave. It's over and done with so quick that you may not even remember you did it. Originally though, it was planned for this to be far more involved, giving Franklin three options. The first is largely what we got. Franklin jumps the architect to obtain the building plans. The second option would have seen Franklin take photos of the architect with his gay lover, and he would then use them to blackmail him for the building plans. The third and final option saw Franklin save the architect from being mugged, and then he'd take the briefcase with the building plans. The Bureau Raid was originally called the Agency Heist, and is still called that in the game's files. The only change with the heist itself is that we were originally going to land the helicopter rather than parachute over, which is a good change, honestly. It feels more intense to glide in and have the helicopter get taken out of the air later. A very strange entry shows that Legal Trouble was simply called Save Film Studio, and it has no description, which shows that it was one of the few missions that they had no specific ideas for. However, another mission that never made it into the game was called Blowback, and involved Trevor being approached by Tao Cheng's translator at his apartment. Trevor guesses that he's wearing a wire, leading to a car chase through the city, with the police joining in as they enter the airport. There was meant to be explosions involving aircraft, with Trevor and the police eventually cornering the translator. You may have guessed it, but it seems like in the release version, the translator was replaced with Molly, and this mission was used to create legal trouble for Michael to save the film studio. Moving now into the side missions, in the release version of Michael's Epsilon mission, Bearing the Truth, Michael had to show his commitment to Epsilon by dressing like them for 10 days. However, originally the developers wanted it to be 50 consecutive days. Similar to this, in Epsilon Exercising the Truth, where Michael has to run 5 miles in the desert to prove his loyalty, originally they wanted us to run 20 miles. I am happy someone came to their senses. Brother, father, son, Keflam. Who's this? The divine truth, Chris Formage. 
The changes to Epsilon knowing the truth reveal that Chris Farmage, the head of the Epsilon cult, was originally meant to be a very short man with a wig, very different from the character we ended up with in the game. Normally in Franklin's side mission Grass Roots the pickup, we steal a truck of drugs out of an impound lot, but originally we were going to steal a monster truck of drugs. More than that, a second mission was to see us do effectively the same thing, but now with a helicopter. Parenting 101 sees Michael save Jimmy after he gets taken captive by a stranger who is mad at him for trolling on the internet. But the original version of this mission was to see Jimmy set up a date with someone he met online, but they turn out to not be who he expects. He is instead met by an overweight geek and winds up being trapped in the trunk of their car as he is driven to a live action role playing event. So that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you did, and I wish you all the best.